Well, hello, my name is Jason Peacock. I'm the admissions officer for the University of North Texas uh, and Argyle High School. Um, generally, I, I host this presentation prior to the uh, Argyle High School uh, College Fair uh, to provide students a little bit of insight into the college search process and help them um, determine what courses, uh, what questions are um, appropriate questions and helpful questions to ask. Um, to help find um, what I think is the most important thing uh, students look for is finding that right college. Uh, I think uh, too often students um, get caught up in trying to find what is the best school uh, and they lose sight of the important question of what is the right school. Um, the goal of the college admissions process is not merely to get into college, um, but it's to get into the college that you're going to be successful and ultimately graduate at. That is the goal line is graduation. And I think if students apply uh, uh, some of the concepts and philosophies that I talk about in this presentation to their college search process, um, then I think the likelihood of success and graduation at the school you do enroll at will be increased. Um, so with this uh, presentation, I commonly talk about why students should go to college. Um, I know the uh, audience at Argyle High School already is aware of why college is important uh, within the scheme of success in today's world. Um, so I won't go too deep into the reasons why to go to college, um, but it is important to discuss different colleges uh, that you'll come into contact with throughout the college search process. Um, you'll come into contact with two-year schools and four-year schools, um, two-year schools providing associate's degrees, um, four-year schools providing bachelor degree options. Um, many times students will start at a two-year school and then transfer into a four-year school. Um, reasons, the expense, uh, costs at TCC uh, for students in Argyle, uh, or uh, are probably 30 to 40 percent of what tuition and fee costs would be uh, at, uh, at an institution like UNT or UT Dallas uh, and considerably less than private institutions. Um, I do, however, encourage students that are thinking of starting at a two-year school always have what the next step is going to be planned. Um, the more information you're able to get to your destination institution before you begin registering for courses at a two-year school, um, the better, the more successful you will be within that transfer process. So don't just blindly start at a two-year school, taking classes, thinking, yeah, this will be fine when I go to the four-year school, because it may not. You'll find a, a number of public and private institutions. Uh, differences between these, certainly cost as well. Um, private institutions usually are um, more expensive than public schools, although uh, the difference may not be incredibly great. And with institutional funding, private schools may in some instances even provide a better total package towards tuition costs than what public schools can. So, don't hesitate to consider private schools as you're doing your searches. Um, church affiliate institutions, I think it's always important uh, to find out um, what church affiliation requires of students. Um, some colleges, that affiliation is historic only, um, but at other schools, you may be expected to complete chapel requirements, take specific religious uh, curriculum coursework in order to complete the degree. So knowing about those components and determining how they'll affect your decision. Important. Uh, ethnic minority and HBCUs, uh, we do have a both, uh, we, uh, we do have a few historically black colleges and universities in Texas, uh, Texas Southern University in Houston, Prairie View A&M and Hempstead are a couple of those options. And we're seeing an increasing number of ethnic minority institutions simply because the uh, demographics of Texas are changing. Uh, UNT is presently an ethnic minority institution. Sam Houston State just announced today uh, uh, that they are a Hispanic serving institution as of this semester. Um, so this is a 
demographic change we're seeing in the state, and it's a demographic change that we are seeing in schools across the state. Uh, there are a few same-sex institutions. Texas Women's is not one of them. Texas Women's University has been same uh, has been co-ed for uh, over 30 years now. Um, we are seeing a diminishing number of these same-sex institutions, but there are uh, still a few out there. Uh, and then specialty major institutions. These are schools which are going to focus in a particular um, band of academic programs. Good example of this, Colorado School of the Mines provides a, a, a number of degree programs focusing on uh, mining, engineering, and technologies. Um, one of the best returns on investments in the nation for students that attend that school. So there are a few of those specialty major schools. University of Missouri Institute of Science and Technology is another. Um, so knowing that, that, that schools will kind of fall into one or a number of these types um, can kind of help you categorize the schools that you're considering. So important factors uh, on the, during the college search process. First and foremost, uh, in my mind, is accreditation. Accreditation is what's going to provide value to your college degree. It's going to be what ensures if you transfer from one school to another school that a preponderance of those courses will transfer and apply to you uh, with, uh, for you at the new school. Now, in uh, we don't really make this completely easy to understand. Um, there are seven different regional accreditation agencies uh, across the uh, across the U.S. and based upon where an institution is located, they should be accredited by one of these organizations. Um, if if you're looking to go to school in Texas, Kentucky, Florida, South Carolina, um, schools within that southeastern region of the United States should be accredited by the North Central, uh, excuse me, the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, SACS accreditation is what we refer to it as. However, if you're looking to go to school in California, it's the Western Association of Schools and Colleges. If you're going to Michigan, Higher Learning Commission of the NCA, the Northern Central Association. So if a school does not have one of these regional accreditations, if you try to transfer to UNT, we would not necessarily recognize any courses from a nationally accredited college or university. Um, and this is something that you can usually uh, Google accreditation on the school's webpage, and you should be able to find one of these regional accreditation agencies on that accreditation page. And if you don't, that doesn't mean the school shouldn't be a consideration, but it is important to know the limitations if you attend a nationally accredited um, school. Now, there is national accreditation, which can have merit um, uh, for students looking at college, but this usually falls within the academic degree program areas. So once an institution is regionally accredited, the individual programs and departments within the school can be nationally accredited. And these are national accreditation boards usually um, connected to some professional organization uh, or some other uh, iteration within the industry. Um, so if you are looking to go into business, um, you may want to ensure that the business school you are going to is AACSB accredited. This is a higher level of accreditation that can be achieved by business schools that meet the requirements of the AACSB. Um, ABET accreditation for engineering students, if any students are interested in engineering, ABET accreditation can be very important because that can decrease the number of years you have to be a practicing engineer to sit for the licensed professional exam. Um, but also there are many engineering uh, companies that will not uh, recruit from schools that do not have a better accreditation. Um, this is a more nebulous concept. So there are a number of these national organizations. Um, 
So certainly doing a little bit of research uh, within your degree plan and finding if there is a national accreditation which might benefit you in the career search, you may want to add that thing, uh, add that to look at during your college search process. So faculty are, are very important. Um, in the college search process, you'll communicate and uh, work with an admissions officer such as myself at an institution. Uh, and we are always eager and look forward to, to, to working with students to help them navigate the admissions process, to answer questions that we can, uh, and help them transition to our universities uh, as an enrolled student successfully. However, once you enroll at that institution, you won't see the admissions officers anymore. Um, so it is important in my mind, as you are researching colleges, uh, you're exercising a little due diligence to reach beyond just the admissions office that you're working with uh, and, and see if you can email or meet with a faculty member in the degree program you're considering. These are the people that you'll see on campus for the next four years. So it's very important to me you have a connection on campus as you're going through the college search process. Um, for, uh, these are certainly the experts in their career fields and can provide far more details about programs and curriculums than any admissions officer could. And every college has a list of faculty by department that you can review. Um, see the faculty member's um, CV, their academic resume, um, uh, to see what their uh, previous papers are, what classes they've taught, uh, what their research interests are. And then if you find a, a professor that you would like to connect with, reach out and see what their response is. It could be very telling if they don't reply uh, to a prospective student what your experience might be at that school as an enrolled student. So definitely reach out to the faculty members. Location is of key importance, um, not just in how it can impact uh, cost of college. If you are going uh, a long distance out of state, you will need to anticipate those additional travel expenses uh, back and forth. Um, but also, I encourage that students consider the community the college is located in. Uh, now, Argyle students, I know, are very familiar with the Denton community and, and, and the college feel that we have around Denton. And it's one of the spectacular reasons to come to North Texas is because of that unique environment that we have. Um, but when I was a senior in high school, I uh, applied to and got into a small liberal arts college uh, I was born and raised in Dallas, and the arts co the uh, college was in a small rural town in Texas of about 25,000 people. And making that transition from living in Dallas my entire life to a col to a very small college town, really it wasn't. I don't think you considered a college town, but the environment wasn't what I needed to be successful off of campus. So we'll talk about the importance of a campus visit in a few moments, um, but when you're scheduling a campus visit, uh, I always encourage students spend the night in the town. See where students go, where they hang out, what is there to do, because these things will not change quickly. And if you end up visiting a campus, but the town is just not right for you, then I would seriously consider you reconsider that college is a good choice. You've got to be happy off of campus to be successful on campus. Now, size of institution can certainly um, uh, have some impact on the decision process. Um, so certainly smaller schools will often have smaller classes, um, smaller student to teacher ratios. Uh, more personal uh, interaction between professors and students throughout the 40-year degree program. Um, large schools, that freshman year, sophomore year coursework are typically going to be a, uh, some core courses in lecture-based classes, where you might be in a class of at, at UNT, 90 to 100, maybe 120 students. Um, but, Size of institution can also impact 
programs offered, both academic programs and student support programs. Larger institutions will typically have far larger number of degree programs and specializations, um, larger networks of alumni, um, more extensive study abroad opportunities. So certainly with the larger size institutions come a lot of benefits, but determining what combination of size, what combination of opportunities offered by schools um, can only be decided by you. But don't discount big schools um, simply because they're big. Likewise, don't discount small schools. We talked a little bit about the differences in cost at, at colleges previously. Um, and one of the most common questions that we are asked as admissions officers uh, is the question, what is your tuition? Um, that is only one small part of the college costs that students and families will pay. So I, I like to encourage students to kind of ask the question instead, what is your cost of attendance? This is a figure that every university has. Uh, it consists of all the different components of college cost. And it's also the number that is used for financial aid purposes. Um, so cost of attendance is very important. Uh, it'll consist of tuition and fees. Um, at state schools, fees are about 30% to 40% of that combined cost. So they're pretty considerable amount of money that you're spending in fees. Private schools, they, have, uh, they generally have a much higher tuition percentage rate and a smaller rate in fees just because of the way um, budgeting works at private institutions compared to private institutions. Um, you'll have room and board costs. If you're living on campus, this will be a direct cost that you'll pay to the university. However, if you were living off campus, as many schools uh, in Texas, even as a freshman, you may well not be able to live on campus. And in that instance, you can still receive financial aid uh, for room and board off of campus. Um, but in that case, it's an indirect payment. So it's going to a third party, not to the university directly. Um, books and supplies are usually, uh, will need to be covered by the student. Um, depending upon the degree program, this can vary dramatically. If you're a music student or an art student, um, there can be some considerable uh, additional costs um, for supplies and materials for those degree programs. Um, this is an overall estimate though. Um, but uh, parking costs and travel expenses. Again, if you're going to school uh, at one of the coasts, adding the additional travel costs, um, those will mount up. But every school will have an estimated cost of attendance that is really the kind of sticker price for the school. Now, I do always recommend when students are talking to colleges and universities, they also realize that college is four years. So whenever you're hearing what a tuition cost is or what a cost of attendance is for a university, you need to multiply that by four to get an idea of what the overall cost is going to be. Many times through aid and scholarships, no student will pay that full, uh, uh, that full tuition and fee amount, that full cost of attendance amount, but it is an amount to be aware of. Selecting a major, particularly at state schools, is more important than ever now. Um, when I was an undergrad 20 years ago, it was much easier to start college undecided, spend a year learning about what was available, and then transferring into uh, and then starting uh, 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 declaring your major and starting a degree program. Now, at the University of North Texas, at least, students must have a major when they apply. Now, I, now this isn't really binding. It can be changed, um, but we don't require students to apply as undecided. Reason why, undecided students do not tend to graduate in a timely fashion, because when they do declare a major, they're going to have to take additional classes in order to, to complete that new degree. Um, so one of the biggest recommendations I can give to students is really begin to focus as much as you can on what degree program is most appropriate for you. Knowing this will also help you find colleges which have degree programs that are going to be most successful for you post-graduation. 
Um, but narrowing down your interest as much as possible as soon as possible will benefit any student. Uh, we talked uh, about fees uh, uh, previously. Um, up to 40% at UNT, it's about $4,000 of your $13,000 tuition and fees um, go to pay for services. Uh, and I think it is important that students are aware of what services are available. Um, hopefully you all are aware that uh, college coursework is going to be more difficult than high school coursework. Um, there is an academic difficulty in that transition. So every school will have tutoring and mentoring support services uh, to make uh, to help students be successful. Um, again, the goal isn't simply getting in, getting students into school, but it's providing them the support that they need to be successful once they are in our school. Um, so tons of academic uh, and mentoring programs are available. So find out what's offered by the school and which ones you may be a beneficiary of. Um, at North Texas, we noticed that students often had financial transition issues uh, coming to college. Um, for some of them, it was the first time they had a bank account or a credit card, and sometimes students get in trouble with those uh, instruments. Um, for loan counseling, for financial aid, uh, we developed a student money management center that kind of provides financial service and counseling for all of our students. But again, what's offered by the school, because in many instances you are paying for these services, and which of those services will you be able to take advantage of? In addition to student support services, uh, campus life is going to be an important aspect of the college search process. Finding a college that's going to keep you um, engaged, uh, entertain, uh, active, uh, for four years through extracurricular activities, student organizations, uh, football games, and the like, that's an important aspect too. Um, every school is going to have a listing of all the student organizations on campus. Uh, and I highly encourage students um, look over those, uh, look over those, uh, look over those, um, find which student organizations might be good matches. And in many instances, you can reach out to the student leadership of those organizations uh, and, and, and ask them what their programs do and, and how students get involved and why you might should consider their school more closely. Um, sometimes asking those questions of strangers at the schools can be a, 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 a very candid assessment as to whether or not the school is going to be a good fit for you. Um, but uh, every school also has an, a calendar online, so you can see what events are being hosted, what uh, musical performances are being done on campus, what lectures uh, are coming through, and, and, and ask yourself, are these the kinds of events that I would be likely to attend um, if, I, if I enrolled at that school? Um, again, you've got to be engaged just as much off of campus and out of class as you are in class. So doing a little additional research is important. Uh, safety and security um, might not always be on the high priority list for students, but we know that your parents are concerned. Uh, so a few of the resources, um, the Clery Act report is a, is a great resource. This is national legislation that every university is obliged to provide criminal statistics on campus for the previous year. And you can go back multiple years and see um, how many burglaries happened on campus, how many petty thefts, and how many more serious crimes may have occurred off on campus. Now, this doesn't necessarily cover neighborhoods surrounding campus if they're not covered by the campus police. Um, so I do always encourage students and families to do a little additional due diligence uh, and find out how community, how safe the surrounding communities uh, of campuses are. Um, because for some schools, they may be an incredible school um, but they may be in a very rough part of town. Um, not to point any fingers, but USC definitely comes to mind. 
Um, security escort services, uh, if it's two in the morning, you're leaving the dorm, uh, is there someone on campus that you can call that can uh, give you a ride back to your dorm? Um, emergency phones on campus with cell phones, this is probably less important, but uh, these are still safety um, components that exist on many campuses. And even motorist assistance, if you are uh, leaving the, um, if you're leaving uh, your dorm and you've got a flat tire, is there someone on campus you can call for assistance? So questions I think are important for students to ask is, are things happening on campus? Is it an active campus? Am I gonna be engaged not only in my academic courses and studying for those classes, but when I have free time? Um, that's one of the incredible differences between high school and college is the amount that you are committed to being in class. Uh, in, co in high school, students are usually at school for eight hours a day, five days a week, longer with extracurricular responsibilities, certainly. But 40 hours almost a week is devoted to classroom instruction. Uh, in college, a full-time student would probably, would not take even half of that, um, 18 hours is considered a heavy load uh, a, as an undergraduate freshman. Um, and that's the number of hours that students are in class per week. Does the uh, college seem student-centered? How important is the student experience on that campus? Or is the campus more of a research-oriented campus? Um, as soon as the uh, class is over, does the professor avoid talking to students to go back to his lab? Or do they engage students? Do they have office hours that provide the forum for students to meet with them? Um, again, campus activities and student support services. Again, what is the focus of the college culture? Is it on the student or is it on other components of the university? And do the current students seem fulfilled and happy? Um, you have likely gotten college brochures from schools um, where it always shows um, perfect weather on campus, uh, it's beautiful blue skies, uh, there's always the, the, the picture of the, the four people in the quads um, throwing the frisbee around. Um, these are marketing materials. You're smart enough to be able to read past the branding attempts in many instances, but a incredible resource for students uh, is to reach out to students you know that are at schools you're considering. So certainly there are students from Argyle High School that have applied to and gone to schools that, that, that are on your list now. And I would advise you reach out to them. Let, uh, ask your counselors maybe if they can help you put in touch with some of them they may be able to assist but use facebook and just find students that you know and ask them questions what was your admissions process like what was uh the financial aid and scholarship awarding process like uh what should i seed on my campus tour what was dorm what is dorm life like these current students that you know are amazingly uh, amazing candid resources and can certainly help you read through some of the uh, marketing materials schools like to put out. So certainly use your resources. Uh, how to research colleges, um, surf the web. Uh, we do see students tend to hit our uh, prospective student websites most often from about 11 at night to about three, two to three in the morning. So we see that you're doing some good work late at night. Keep the midnight oil burning. Um, obtain college publications, always the most effective way to begin researching institutions. Um, go to, uh, if you're interested in North Texas, I always have to put the plug in. Uh, you can go to go.unt.edu, uh, leave your name and address information, and we would love to get additional information about UNT if interested. Compare your choices. So if you have your list of five, seven colleges, list them out. 
put the five colleges across the top of, of a sheet of paper. List some of these important co components uh, that we talked about um, along the uh, uh, along the vertical, and, and and kind of fill out the spreadsheet. Once you kind of really compare and contrast how the answers for the different schools look, you might find that your fourth or fifth choice is should actually be your first or second choice. So so don't get blinded by marketing, by college colors, by mascots. While those are all important components of the college experience, they're going to have less impact on success after college. So really look to see how you are going to find a school that's going to be best for you. Uh, visit the campus. Um, if you're thinking of spending $64,000 a year, I think is the estimated cost of attendance for Notre Dame right now. Well, then I think it's important for students to visit that campus before making that commitment. There's no more holistic experience a student can have in the college search process than planning your feet on campus, seeing the student body pass between classes, eating in the cafeteria, going to the library, and really asking yourself, is this the right place for me? Um, generally, students can feel it when they've landed on the right campus, um, but it's imperative that you visit campus. And I would even suggest visit campus during their rough season. So I would tell a, a, a student uh, from New York if they're considering North Texas, come and visit us in August, see how we are when we're the hottest. And if you can handle that, then maybe we're still gonna be a good school for you. Likewise, if you're looking to go to Michigan, go in January, um, see if you can deal with a day or two of, the, of, of the, that, those conditions. Uh, and if not, it's probably not gonna be a good spot for four years. But it is imperative that you make that commitment to visit any campus you are applying to to make sure you don't end up on campus and hate it. Uh, every school will have special prospective student events. So always communicate with your admissions officers about these events. Uh, UNT's special event is UNT Preview. Uh, it's coming up October 23rd, certainly. Uh, if, you have, uh, if you are interested in that, let me know and we'd love to get you an invitation out to that event. And then finally, reach out. Talk to your admissions officers. Uh, if you're interested in, in UNT, contact me. If you're interested in other schools, reach out to the admissions officers. They are phenomenal gatekeepers to their institution and can provide you a wealth of information, not only about their school, but providing you recommendations and suggestions to successfully get through the admissions process and be considered as strong candidates for scholarship and financial aid. Um, so don't hesitate. Don't be nervous to contact admissions officers. Um, I know my personal philosophy, I'm an admissions officer, not a denial officer. So my job when I'm working with students is figuring out how we can get students admitted. So don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, we do offer campus tours at North Texas, of course, Monday through Saturdays. So if any of you are interested in joining us for a campus tour, tours.unt.edu. Uh, but my contact information, um, jason.peacock at unt.edu. If you do have any questions about North Texas, of course, but about college access in general, I'd be more than happy to point you in the right direction if I can. Um, but I do look forward to working with some of you as you apply to North Texas. Um, thanks so much for your uh, attention today. And hopefully this presentation has been somewhat helpful in laying out the landscape of how to find what college will be right so you graduate and move on to a successful life. Thanks so much for your attention. Uh, have a great afternoon and go Mean Green. Thanks.